came to Thailand with my friend and my roommate, Katie Hetrick. The point of this trip wasn't to climb the hardest thing we've ever done. We wanted to showcase what Thailand has to offer the climbing community and how much is left to be developed and just how awesome the culture is here. Like climbing aside, this place is amazing. The lifestyle here is really mellow. There's a phrase called Thailand time and you just kind of go with the flow. You expect everyone to be a little late. You say you'll meet down at the beach in Tonsai to climb at 8.30 and people will show up at 10. And there's no pressure to go out and send. Like you sort of just wake up and, and hang out and go climbing. The nightlife is really cool. Tonsai's a little bit more of a, a party scene. Every night there's a fire dancing performance. There were Mai Tai boxing matches. Everything is open air. All your food is cooked open air. All the bars are open air. There's no reason for walls because it's so warm. One of my favorite climbs we did in Tonsai was called the Ao Nang Tower. You get a long tail boat and he takes you out to the tower. You actually jump out of the boat onto the cliff. It's supposed to be three steep pitches of like 11A, 11B, 11C. I got a little scared <laughs> looking down and just seeing like water 100 feet below you. It was a little scary. Really nice climbing. Like the last pitch was one of the best pitches I've done here. It's like super exposed. Oh, the tail. Man, so close. I was feeling a little rough at the beginning of the trip. I got what's commonly referred to as the tonsai tummy. <laughs> Everyone's had it. It gets everyone. The tonsai tummy doesn't spare anyone. One of my other favorite days in Tonsai, we went deep water soloing. Oh, right here. Yeah. I hadn't done it in years, and it was so cool. It was a little hard because the holds get really wet. Like, the first person who goes gets kayaked over, all the holds are dry, and they're sort of like pioneering up these routes. But everyone who goes after, because you fall in the water, water splashes, people swim over to the problems, the holds just get wetter and wetter, and the problems get harder and harder. You don't get a break. You swim to the climbing, and then you climb, and then you fall, and then you swim back to the boat or swim back to the climbing. Like, you never get to rest. You're just swimming or climbing. It's a tricky little form of climbing, but it's so cool. Let's go multi-pitching. Let's go multi-pitching. Let's go, let's go to this adventure. The limestone climbing in Tonsai is crazy. It has these huge dripping stalactite tufa features that I've never really seen anywhere else. It's super three-dimensional, getting up on a face and you sort of start to panic because you run out of holds. Then you look behind you and there's this like eight-foot stalactite hanging down below you and you need to lean across or step across to it and jump onto it, scramble around it, climb up it, and then continue on the face. It was really physical, a lot of like stemming and pressing. It was really cool to sample all of these different types of climbing in one area, in one climate. The most common form of transportation in Thailand is moped. It's scary and dangerous and efficient. It was really cool to have the freedom to be able to just like jump on a bike and go exploring. 
whenever we wanted. Josh Morris has put a ton into developing this area. His school sort of develops a program for guides and teaching and bringing students and climbers out to Crazy Horse for a day of climbing. The first time I went climbing in Thailand was in December of 99 down in Riley. And ever since then, I uh, have been climbing. Our effort is to try and get people to go out and explore in the Mayon community, which is out where Crazy Horse Buttress is, and just connect with people and, and share a little bit of passion for the outdoors, because ultimately we think that cultural understanding of integrating with other cultures is just going to make the world a better place and keep our climbing playgrounds protected for a long time. There were six routes put up by a famous Thai climber named Kraisak Buntip in 1998. 2000 we started adding to them and 6 became 13 and then 25 and then 45 and now there's almost 200 routes at uh, Crazy Horse. Some of the coolest routes I've done in Thailand were up at the Heart Wall. It was really cool climbing. The hardest thing we did in Crazy Horse was maybe 12A. It's, it's basically the land of 511s which was really fun. You could go and just get a ton of pitches in and you never really had to climb anything twice. You just climb everything and it takes one go and then you move on to something else. The limestone climbing there is really different from Tonsai. There aren't as many stalactites. It's more like face limestone climbing and it was a little bit cooler. Maybe five degrees cooler, I don't know. It wasn't that much cooler. The gym in Chiang Mai likes to promote a lot of sustainability, mostly taking people up to this Karen village. Uh, it's a six or seven hour drive, quite a bit of off-roading, and basically showing people how a fully sustainable village is run. 16 huts in the village, about 60 people live there. It was just so inspiring to see a fully sustainable village like that. They use every part of the chicken, every part of the pumpkin. They make all of their own cutlery and utensils, and, and they have a solar power system that's set up so they can have light. There's a blacksmith who makes all of their knives and all of their cooking utensils. They weave all of their own clothes. It usually takes about three days to make one shirt and they'll take it into the market and sell. They make shirts and bags and scarves. Yeah, like that. They're just living in the jungle, crushing it. Really complicated. Our guide, Pui, was amazing. She does a lot with the sustainable living farm in the village, and she was really great to have around, super knowledgeable, and she translated everything for us. If like raining season or any day that very cloudy is not too sunny day, so they might not get a lot of uh, power to use. Their solar power worked, but there would be like one little light bulb hanging in the center of their hut. Part of what we were doing in this village was bringing up some Goal Zero solar batteries and small lights for them to be able to crank a light and have light to cook dinner with. They flipped. Their minds were blown. They were so grateful and so appreciative and so excited to be able to have these lights. It was just so inspiring to see a fully sustainable village like that. My dogs, my dogs. It was really cool ending our trip in Konken. What are you trying? I don't know. A little proj, a little proj, proj. The rock is amazing. It's super textured. Our tips are bleeding after climbing on limestone for a month. It's just in a huge, endless boulder field. It's crazy, and there's so much potential. Everything we walk past, we're like, this could be really awesome, this could be really sick, that could be really hard. And it's not just V11s, it's like, this could be a really awesome V1. This could be a really awesome V3. There's three guys doing all the work and all these lines left to go up. It's, it's really cool.
Get it. Come on. Get it. Come on. This place is magical, you know? It sticks with you. Like, the people in the place is so special and everywhere we've been is so beautiful and the culture's been so welcoming and warm that it's a really special place. Really? And the beast. <laughs> That's a monster. That's not in our daily that particular spider. You're gonna poke it and it's gonna jump on my face. Yeah, it's gonna oh no. <laughs>